Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the knitting podcast. I basically created a combination of blue sage and eucalyptus. I screwed up my friend's knit. And of course, I know nothing about babies. I've never had a baby. My only baby is a cat. So this podcast is going to be for June 2024. I can't believe this is a fifth episode. Like... I'm almost at half a year and that's crazy to me. Normally I would wear my FOs but I just don't have my FOs with me right now or like the one that I would wear. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just wearing a black t-shirt. It's kind of boring but it is really hot and I just have to wear something that can let me breathe. I mean, it is black but with normal clothing, I don't own any color and I especially don't own any white and I'm definitely like more of a dark color kind of girl so yeah, it's hot but this will do. <laughs> If you're new here, welcome. I'm Cindy and I post knitting podcasts every month. I also post knitting vlogs where I bring you from winding up a ball of yarn to wearing the actual finished garment. So if you're interested in watching me knit through a whole garment and learning the pros and cons of each project and everything like that, definitely check out some of my knit vlogs. I post a knit vlog for everything that I make, so if you see something that I'm making right now or have made and you're interested in knowing more about it, go check out some of the videos I've posted. It might be there and if it's not then it's coming. I promise. Knit vlogs just take me a little bit longer to edit. My next knit vlog will probably be the very skirt but before that I will be posting a yarn dyeing video. So if you're interested in my yarn dyeing journey, check that out. So let's get into the knitting podcast. For my podcast I like to start with FO and then I go into whips and then yarn acquisition and knitting blends. So let's start with FOs. I have two FOs this month. The first FO I have for this month is the camisole number five, and that was a gift knit. Unfortunately, I don't have it with me right now to show you, but the good news is that I finished it in time to give it to my friend and before I did that, I actually filmed a little clip of me talking about it. So I'm going to insert that in this podcast now. The lighting might be a little bit different because I filmed that at like 6am in the morning before I had to go to work, so enjoy. Hello, it is June 27th at like 6am right now, so it is very early. I'm gonna talk a little bit quieter than I normally do because my whole house is still sleeping. I am filming this right before I have to get to work because I finished this cami number 5 just last night, like literally 2am. So, I mean like 5 hours ago. So I lied, it's actually 7am now. It's actually still like a little bit wet right now, but it's okay. I want to show you guys how it looks and yeah, I can bear with the wetness for a little bit. This is the camisole number 5 and this is going to be my first FO. Normally, I would be wearing this throughout the whole video, but because this is a gift knit and my friend is in town this week, I promised her that I would give it to her when she's in Toronto visiting and I didn't actually meet the deadline as well as I wanted to. She told me to knit this for her like over half a year ago, so it's like completely my fault for not planning it properly. It took me about, I want to say like a month to knit this, but I was also knitting other things as well. I've knitted two camisole number fives prior to this, so this is my third one. Each one took me two weeks to knit, but this one definitely took me longer because I was trying to juggle other test knits along the way and everything like that. So it makes sense that this one took me a little bit longer. I think I casted this on maybe May or beginning of May. I don't really remember, but yeah, I just finished it now and it's June 27th, so either a month or a month and a half. But anyway, time is not a matter when you're knitting. It's just the fact that it was a gift knit and I had a deadline that I had to give to my friend. So that's the only reason why I'm talking about how long it took me. But normally I don't care how long it takes me to knit a piece because I know I'm working on other things and I have a life and everything like that. Let's talk a little bit about this camisole number five. So first of all, I knit this using Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino and the color is putty. I tend to really like the color putty because I really like the Santa Scarn version, which is 1015, and I use that for everything. It's more of like a warmer white, for this one is more of like a warmer gray white, so I think it looks better with my skin tone versus like a cooler white because I have a warmer skin tone and I feel like this just matches a little bit better. It's a very wearable color, it's timeless, and it matches with everything. I knit this in three millimeters, 
which is what I've used previously as well. So I guess I can just talk about some comparisons between the three that I noticed. Just to preface a little bit, this is using Saniscarn Baby Oil and then this one is using Wool Like by Loops and Thread and this is just like yarn that I bought at Michael's. <laughs> Super cheap. It was literally like $4 and then I also got like a 30% off coupon. The first thing I will say about Cotton Merino is that I think I don't like the cotton in the Cotton Merino. I know it makes it more breathable, better for summer knits and everything like that. I feel like I just don't like how it doesn't snatch the stitches back together. And what I mean by that is when I knit with Merino, I feel like everything is super clean. If you look at this band right here, it looks so clean. It looks like everything is intact, the stitches are tight, nothing looks too loose. Everything just looks so nice. And even with this wool like, although this is not my favorite yarn, actually, like, I wouldn't suggest this yarn, <laughs> but even with this one, there's a little bit of pilling, but it's okay. Like, the button band looks really clean. But with this button band, I feel like it doesn't look as clean, and I'm gonna move up really close to you guys, so just brace yourselves. If you can tell here, it looks very wonky and some of the stitches just don't look like they're kind of like snatched together, like holding its shape. It just looks a little bit weird and some parts just look a little looser than others. And the neckline's okay. It definitely did not look as good before blocking. Like now it looks a lot better after blocking, but even then I don't think it looks the cleanest. Even here. I will also show you guys photos of before I blocked because before I blocked it, it was really bothering me how it looked and I was kind of like telling myself that I screwed up my friend's knit and she's gonna hate it and she's not gonna wear this at all because it looks so messy. I was kind of like beating myself up over that but not that it's blocked, it looks a lot better but not amazing. I was kind of asking my friends about it and also talking to you guys on Instagram about it and a lot of you guys were telling me like it's probably the yarn. People do say knitting for olive cotton merino and just merino is like a little bit like finicky to work with so it's not like the easiest for it to look like clean. Um, but yeah that's just kind of what I've noticed for the knitting for olive cotton merino. Uh, it's just it's okay it's not like the best but i do really like the color one thing i really want to mention is the neckline because the pattern suggests a certain amount of stitches to pick up for the neckline but it never works out for me because i don't know like my head is just small or something not holding a lot of knowledge in here but i feel like the neckline is always so big when i follow the pattern exactly most people said that they had to downsize on the amount of stitches for the neckline and i did as well for this one i picked up 26 stitches less than what the pattern suggests and actually for both of these i did the same exact thing so this is 26 let's say like 26 ish i don't really remember the exact number but this one was 26 let's just say like 26 stitches less than the pattern tells you to and same with this one and both of these the neckline fits me perfectly this is just what i've done for all three of these and just keep that in mind because i think a lot of people have the same experience as me and they also had to downsize on the neckline but I've also talked to some of you guys who actually had to keep it the same or even like make it wider. I think it has a lot to do with the yarn you use and not just like the shape of your body, but yes, also that. But also the yarn you use, whether or not it's stretchy and all that kind of stuff. I'll leave a photo of me before I fix the stitches because I definitely knitted this with the suggested number of stitches and then I had to like fix it later. The reason is because both of these ones, I did not knit using the suggested yarn, but this one is actually the suggested yarn on the pattern. So I thought maybe because I'm using exactly what they are recommending that I should just follow the pattern exactly, but I was so wrong so even in this scenario i still had to lower the amount of stitches as for the armholes i follow exactly what the pattern said and i think they're okay i don't have any complaints other than the fact that it looks really wonky here <laughs> with the armholes i just stitched it together with a kitchener graph and i think that worked out perfectly for me for the bottom i just did a simple Italian bind off, but two by two Italian bind off. These ones are also binded off with the two by two Italian 
bind off I did not do a tubular because I mean it's not very necessary and I think in this scenario it's better if it's a little bit more stretchy so Italian bind off it was it works really well like it's super stretchy so yep that worked well for me and same with the neckline I also did an Italian bind off this one was a one by one ribbing so simple Italian bind off and no complaints there in terms of the collar I tend to like it like a little bit wider like up here it says two centimeters or something I forget how much it tells you to knit to but I definitely knitted it up to that point but also a little bit more because I think I like the thicker neckline I think it looks good that's just, I maybe it's a preference thing, but I think I did the same for this one and this one as well. So yeah, the neckline is like this, like a tiny bit longer than what the pattern suggests. So that's just, uh, <laughs> yeah, what I wanted to do. Other than the fact that the yarn didn't look as clean as I would have liked it, I don't really have any other complaints or concerns with this camisole and i think it looks really nice i will say though this might be my last camisole number five like forever actually don't call me on that i'm not sure maybe i'll do like a couple of years of a break and then i'll come back to it but for now three camisole number fives within like one and a half years is just too much for me i think i'm going to step away from the camisole number five for a little bit before i decide to knit it again but i will say that this is like a classic and timeless piece and i highly recommend you to knit this if you haven't yet already and i think that's about it for the camisole number five so i'm going to close off this segment now and i'm gonna let you go back to my main podcast I also have to go to work now, so yeah, I'll talk later. Bye! <laughs> All right, welcome back. <laughs> so for the second FO, it is going to be a baby knit. Somebody I know had a baby recently. Like, the baby is literally one month old, not even actually, now that I think about it baby like newborn baby and of course i know nothing about babies i've never had a baby my only baby is a cat i didn't know what yarn or patterns to use for baby knits because i know some babies are sensitive and i wanted to be careful of that so i figured maybe like baby yarns would be good i don't actually know anything about babies and what they wear and what material is good for them or anything like that so i went on ig and i asked you guys for some suggestion on yarn and patterns and you guys gave me a ton of great suggestions and I'm so grateful for you guys because I would have not known what to do or what would have been like the best pattern or yarn to use so I'm just really really happy that I got so many great suggestions and if you guys are into baby knitting right now or maybe you guys are looking to baby knit in the next few months I'm going to share with you guys all the great suggestions I got because I know it's really hard to figure out what's good out there I did a lot of research online even on Google and I just couldn't figure out what's good and what's not all these articles are telling me so many things and I felt like just researching online didn't give me the exact answers I needed but you guys were really helpful in telling me exactly what you guys have done and what worked and what didn't for those of you who are looking to baby knit and are interested in the suggestions that i got i will leave all the recommendations that i received from you guys at the end of the video so if you guys are interested definitely go check it out at the end and i'll leave a little timestamp at the bottom as well so you can skip to the end to learn more about it but for now i'm just gonna move on to my fo so this is my first fo it is the baby bear bonnet or the baby bear hat by knitting for olive i just stuffed it with the yarn so that it would look more like a baby's head although it looks kind of like louise from bob's burger <laughs> if i made it in pink i feel like this would have been the perfect hat for her costume this is knitted up in knitting for olive cotton merino because i already had it in my stash i knitted this because somebody suggested it to me when i posted my question on instagram and they said the baby bear bonnet is like I tried it true for them and it's really fast to knit up at that point it was saturday and i was going to see the baby on monday which is today so i needed something quick and easy to knit up so that i could give it to them today and this ended up being the perfect pattern because i read online that a lot of people actually finished this baby bear bonnet in two days so i was hopeful that i would be able to finish it by monday if i start on saturday and luckily I did. I actually knitted this up in one day. I just spent all day Saturday knitting and I wasn't even like consecutively knitting non-stop. I would go out for walks, go out for dinner and I would just knit here and there and I somehow finished it up and it was a super fast knit, a really easy knit. So I feel like if you're an intermediate knitter and you know how to do short rows, you know how to do picking up edges, increases, 
this would be very easy for you. It was very satisfying to knit because I was able to finish it so fast and you can see the hat come together like pretty quickly. So I would say if you're looking for a fast, easy, quick thing to knit that you just need to like give to a baby in two or three days, I would highly suggest this. This one is knitted up in Knitting for Olive's Cotton Merino because that was what I had in stash and I figured I would just use it because it is like the perfect color for a baby bear. This is a yarn that I use. I was a little bit worried about using this yarn because I wasn't sure if it was good for babies and I know there's baby yarn out there so I wasn't sure if I should use an actual baby yarn or maybe this one would be okay but the pattern actually suggests this yarn or the merino by knitting for olive so i figured maybe the cotton merino would be fine i feel like it's pretty soft after blocking it i feel like it got even softer like if i were to <laughs> rub it against my neck i think it feels fine but you know it is a baby so i'm not really sure you guys let me know is cotton merino okay for babies <laughs> It seems to me that a lot of people suggested to me knitting for olive merino and cotton merino are okay or any type of like superwash merino and of course any baby yarn I guess so yeah I just went with this for <laughs> this project so cute I completely followed the pattern I made no modifications whatsoever and yeah it was a um, easy and fast knit the only thing I really don't like is I cord like I just personally don't like I cord I don't mind I cord bind off like I don't mind it when you do it on an edge but I just really don't like doing like I cord the actual <laughs> tube because <laughs> I feel like it looks really messy and I kept having to do this massaging motion to fluff it back up and make it look more even. I feel like every time somebody has a baby I'm just gonna knit them this now. <laughs> so here's the baby bear bonnet. This is my second FO. And I think that's the only two FOs I have. I don't think I finished anything else. But it's pretty impressive that I was able to finish two things this month, so I will give myself that. Let's move on to whips. I actually only have one whip right now, if you don't count the throw that's been sitting on my couch for like two years. This is the one and only whip that I have, and it's the Haru Vest. I talked about this in my last podcast as well, but I am still not done. I will say though, I don't think it will take me much longer to finish it. I already have one armhole done, and it looks really, really great. It's just a ribbing, and same thing here. I Well, this one I haven't done yet, but I think I can do it in a day. So the ribbing is very fast and easy to do. And then after that, it's just the button band and it's a double knitted button band all around. Those usually take me about a day or two. If it's a day in the office, it'll probably take me two days. But if I'm just chilling at home, it'll probably take me one full day. And then other than that, I also have to go buy buttons for this. For the buttons, I was thinking more of a lighter wood color. I tend to really like like the white wood color or light wood color. Actually, I have my coffee cup right here. This is like dangerous, but I really like colors like this, maybe a little bit lighter. Maybe a button in that color would be nice. Hmm, or a bit lighter. So that's what I'm thinking of. It's been quite the journey because I was able to finish this pretty early on, but I took a really long break to knit the camisole number five. And then I also took a little bit of a break to knit this one day break. So yeah, that's why I feel like I'm still not done this vest and I'm not finished as early as I could have been, but that's okay. Now that I only have this one whip, I'm just going to get this done in like the next two, three, four days, I guess, <laughs> and I can move on to other things. I'll try it on for you guys now. It is very hot, so I don't know when I will get to wear this. This is what it looks like so far. It's very cropped on me and I think it has to do with my cable tensions and how I knit and the fact that I am knitting very tightly with cables because I want the cables to look clean. As a consequence, it is a lot shorter and more cropped and less oversized. This is the armhole and I think the armhole looks really good. So for the yarn, I am using this diamond mohair that I purchased online and then I'm holding it together with this cashmere yarn. And lastly, I'm holding it with the alpaca lace yarn from Santa Scarn. So these three together ends up looking like this. If you're interested in learning more about each of these three yarns or if you want me to go more in depth with where I bought it and everything like that, I will leave more details down below. But also check out my previous knitting podcast for May 2024 because I go more in depth with each of them. You can kind of go there to learn more about it if you're interested. I'll also be posting a knitting podcast for this maybe in a month or so. So you can also check that out if you're interested. So this is my one and only whip. 
So we went through my two FOs and my one whip. And now let's talk about yarn acquisition. I actually acquired quite a bit of yarn this month and I think it's because I started yarn dyeing. I went to a yarn dyeing workshop which is hosted by Good Grief at Noble Space in Toronto and it was my first time dyeing yarn ever and I just wanted to join that class because I want to learn the basics to see if I could do it at home. I went with my friend Tara and it was just such a fun time. I posted a vlog of this and I'll leave it here if you're interested in watching. If you're in the Toronto area and you're into dyeing yarn or maybe you just want to learn a little bit more about it, I would highly suggest you check it out. If you don't know if you want to go yet, you can also check out my vlog to see if it's something you're interested in. It's really fun. You get to take home two hanks. There's three bases that you can choose from for the hanks. You can choose from a cotton merino, a bulky worsted, I'm not really sure what the material is, or the fundamental sock which would be a superwash merino. Within these three you can choose two hanks to dye and take home as well. I thought it was a very good way to get into yarn dyeing and trying it out so i signed up and it was a lot of fun and i learned a lot from it so we first went to dye yarn in the beginning of june and i dyed these two hanks these are what i made i went into the class not knowing what i wanted to do i had some inspiration photos but i didn't know what color specifically or what to do. I'm not a very decisive person so even if I had a game plan I feel like I would have just tossed it out the window and done whatever I wanted to do at the moment. This is what I created and it looks really really nice. It's exactly all the colors that I love so I'm not even surprised that the hank turned out like this. I actually have a few of the Good Grief hand dyed yarns already in my stash and I noticed that this is just a combination of the two Good Grief colors that I like. These two are both by Good Grief. One is called the Blue Sage and the other one is called Eucalyptus. This is something that I've purchased myself from Good Grief before and look at the yarn that I dyed. I basically created a combination of Blue Sage and Eucalyptus. But I'm not complaining because I love these colors and I could always use this in my wardrobe and I feel like these colors tend to look better on me. We actually just used Rit dye to dye these so they're non-toxic. We didn't use acid dyes or anything like that. We used the Rit dye liquid and the Rit dye powder. I just have a little bit of speckles over here if you can see and that is a pearly gray speckle up here as well. I will say though, if you're using the powder dyes from Rit Dye, I've had this happen on two occasions where there's like little bits of colors of other colors in there. So for example, if I like sprinkle a little bit of pearly gray, there might be like one yellow in there and it'll completely change the way it looks. You can kind of see that there's like one yellow speckle right there. I don't know where it comes from. I feel like Rit Dye's QC is not very good, but... It is cheap and easily accessible, so if you're just kind of like a beginner at hand dyeing, I would just say that red dye is fine and it does the job, but I wouldn't say it's like the best dye out there. But if you're just doing it at home, you don't want a toxic dye and you don't want to have to wear like a respiratory mask, this is like a very great alternative. You just have to accept the fact that sometimes other colors will come out, but it's okay. I think it still looks nice and it adds to its uniqueness. So these are what I dyed with the Good Grief workshop at Noble Space Toronto. So there's that. And then because we're so into yarn dyeing now and we're just obsessed with this sport, we decided to meet up again, Tara and I, and we dyed more yarn. So I bought some Bear Shadow from Knit Picks because they were doing a sale. I don't remember how much but I think maybe like five dollars USD or something like that for their shadow yarn. So I bought four. It came in a hundred grams and it was like 800 meters. This is a huge, huge hank of lace merino. The reason I chose a lace merino is because I really wanted to hand dye this and then hold this together with a tonal or a solid color yarn. This one is dyed with a little bit more unique colors. So if you can see, it kind of reminds me of a unicorn. There are so many colors in this one. How I created these colors were neon green, the lighter blue is aquamarine blue, the pink is fuchsia, and then the purple is literally just a mix of the fuchsia and the aquamarine. The darker blue here, this is all royal blue. And the royal blue was done because I put royal blue powder dye on top and then it ended up just spreading 
everywhere. It failed at being a speckled, but it's okay because I think it still looks really nice. So I dyed two hanks of this. These were dyed together. You can really see the royal blue powder shine through here. So because I have four hanks, I wanted to do two of each color. And this was the first one. And the second color, or color way, I guess, is this purple color. I originally wanted to do more of a periwinkle blue, but I think I failed at that. You can kind of see the periwinkle shine through like like maybe here? Not even, it's like very purple. <laughs> yeah, I needed to add more blue to this. It ended up just being super purple, but it's okay. I really like purple, so I'm not complaining. I'm not sure what I want to knit with this yet, and I'm not sure how I want to hold it together yet. So more to come with this. For these two, I want to hold it together with this beautiful Surrey alpaca from Good Grief. And I think it would look so nice together. I think the hand-dyed merino and the different color variegations would really lightly peep through the Surrey alpaca. So I'm gonna hold these together and probably knit a lighter cardigan. I haven't really decided which one yet, but I'm thinking something along the lines of like Whitmore cardigan or maybe the peacock cardigan or the tied and true. I don't really know which one, but I feel like the tied and true is like really speaking to me because it looks so cute, but I don't know. I feel like for wintertime, maybe like Peacock and Whitmore might be a little bit more wearable. We'll see. At the workshop, we also hand dyed a community yarn where we had two hanks. One was cotton merino, the other one was a superwash sock. And we all just worked together to dye a section of the yarn just as practice because we didn't want to just go right into our own hanks. So we each chose a color and we dyed a part of this community yarn. At the workshop, there were two and they just did a little draw to see who could take them home. It was completely like lottery system. And I luckily won the cotton merino one. It is so cute. I love it. It's definitely very carnival-y to me. A lot of purple, pinks, and yellow. And because Tara went with me, I am going to hang this up 50-50. So then she will get half of it and then we can make socks or some sort of accessory with this just to kind of remember our time at the workshop. We figured that would be a really great souvenir for us. So there we go. This is the community yarn. Other than all the yarn that I dyed, I actually purchased three baby yarn because I really want to get this baby yarn knitting going because it's fun and it's cute and I love knitting baby things now. I actually went to Knitting Loft yesterday to pick this up because somebody suggested it to me. So I picked up the Barocco Vintage Baby and it is okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be very honest. It's okay. The reason why I was so interested in this was because it is machine washable and you can tumble dry low with this. So I figured it'd be really great because the parents that I know I think are going to be super tired and they don't have time to hand wash anything. If I can give them something that they can just like throw in the wash, it'd be so much easier. So I decided to give this a try. I bought three of them, but I think I bought too many. I'm pretty sure I only needed two. I'm thinking of making the Willems summer overall with this but i purchased enough for the normal overalls not the summer one so we'll see what i decide to make with this the makeup of this yarn is actually half acrylic and then wool and nylon so i think the nylon is giving it more of a smooth texture but I can definitely feel the acrylic from it. And to be honest, I didn't know that it was acrylic. I didn't read the material list before purchasing this, so I didn't know there was so much acrylic in it. But I guess that's why it is machine washable and you can tumble dry low. Oh yeah, and the color is 10020 Sunflower. The thing with baby knitting is that you can use all your scraps and just put something together because like I have so many 50 gram ball yarn that I just didn't end up using. And I'm like, this is perfect. I can just use it for a baby knit. I do actually have a lot of baby yarn in my stash because I'm very sensitive. So I really like baby yarn myself. So I figured I could use some of my baby oil from Sandus Garn for these baby knits. This one's just the terracotta color that I have just sitting in my stash. So I might be doing something with that. I also have this other green color that I use to make my camisole number five, like literally a scrap ball of yarn. And I feel like I might be able to knit something up for the baby with this too. Even if it's not one full piece, I could maybe do like a top or stripes or something like that. So I feel like this is just very, very handy. I also have a white color as well. Like I just have so much baby yarn that I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but I could just use my scraps. This is like 
incredible i love baby knitting in terms of knitting plans as you can tell i'm just super into baby knits right now but i talked about the fish pouch last podcast and i'm still going to knit that i am very excited because i just want to knit like pouches for all my friends and i we can match for our bags and use as charms so that is still on my list i'm going to knit it this month i promise you i will be knitting a few of those this month so you'll see it in my next podcast as for baby knits i'm thinking of knitting the willem summer overall for the baby and also for myself i'm finally going to cast on the raglith hoodie that i talked about like three months ago probably i'm really excited about this hoodie because it is knitted up in bulky weight and i have the perfect yarn combination for that i'm going to combine these three hanks of yarn to knit the hoodie because these yarns are all fairly similar in color. I want to combine them and knit them together so that I can get more of a marled color look. Kind of like what I did with the Marie skirt. And I'm just super into mixing yarns right now and trying out different combinations. So I'm really excited to try these together. Or maybe I'll use the one that I dyed together for a little bit more of a color variegation. So yeah, I'm very excited to cast on the Regolith hoodie this month and I feel like that hoodie is definitely gonna be at least like a two month knit. If I cast it on now, I can wear it by October and that would be perfect sweater weather. I think that's about it for my knitting plans. So at this point, I'm just gonna share some of the baby knit suggestions that I got from you guys. So if you're also looking to knit baby things, you might find this helpful. So the first suggestion I got was actually for the Barocco Vintage Baby Yarn. I actually purchased it myself, so I am going to knit the overalls with this and let you know what I think or how I feel about it. So you'll hear about this in the next podcast. The next suggestion I got was to knit the baby bear hat by Knitting for Olive and took your suggestion. It's right here. This one is a 10 out of 10 for me. I'm not sure about its practicality for an actual baby. If you just want to knit something for the parents so that they can kind of use it as more of like a sentimental gift, I feel like this is like a 10 out of 10 knit. For the next suggestion, I was uh, given two petite knit sets, the Holger set and the Seaside set. Actually, the Seaside set, I heard from several people that it's good. So I might actually knit that for when the baby is like one years old. And the Holger set is so cute. It just looks like toys to me. So I really want to knit that as well. Somebody suggested no onesies. I feel like I can understand that. It might be like hard maybe to put the onesie on the baby. Or maybe it's too hot. Or maybe it's just really annoying to knit. I don't know. You guys let me know why no onesies. And are overalls okay? Because I want to knit these overalls and are these practical? I don't even know. You guys let me know. And then after that, we got the Pearl Soho Smarty Pants and Classic Baby Hats. And these are free, so, you know, I love free. And for the last one, we have the Harold Sweater by Petite Knit. And I think that one's really cute. Is it just me or does it kind of remind you guys of the Sunday tee? Is it the same pattern or is it different? It looks very similar to me, but I'm not really sure because I've never knit the Sunday tee. So yeah, let me know if you guys know. Those are all the suggestions I got. So hopefully you guys found it helpful if you're also looking to knit baby knits. So happy that I'm able to learn so much from you guys. Hopefully I can kind of give this information back to you guys and kind of condense it in an easy to digest form if you guys are also looking for the same thing. But yeah, let me know if that was helpful or if you have any other baby knit suggestions because I would love to hear it. So this is it for my video and thank you so much for watching till the end I feel like I talked so much I am starting to lose my voice you guys like do I talk too loud or something but I hope you enjoyed it and you liked it this was quite the long video for me I keep running out of memory in my memory card too that's like a sign of me having to wrap this up I think <laughs> I post these podcasts once a month just as like a catch up between you and I. So definitely let me know what you are knitting and what's going on in your life because I want to know. If you're interested in more of my content, I post knit vlogs of everything I make and I also post normal daily life vlogs or anything that's like a little bit more crafty, for example, like yarn dyeing. I will be posting a knit vlog soon. So look out for that and it would probably be the Marie skirt. That one will be a fun one to edit. If you're interested in following me on my journey, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel below and if you want more regular updates from me then follow me on instagram because i post a lot more often there thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye